Hi all. The oyster mushroom expert is with you. Today I will tell you what the yield of oyster mushroom depends on. And today we'll talk about everything related to the substrate. We will figure out whether the yield depends on the components from which the substrate is made, on the method of processing the raw materials, on the amount of mycelium and on the properties of the substrate block itself. That is, on its size, weight and number of perforations. I want to clarify that mushroom growers often use the terms sterilization and pasteurization incorrectly. I often read the expression, I sterilize the straw in a lime solution. However, the term sterilization itself implies the complete destruction of all microorganisms. Of course, lime cannot destroy all microorganisms in the straw. In fact, sterilization can be carried out with chemicals, but definitely not with lime. In mushroom growing, only steam sterilization is used, at a temperature of 121 degrees Celsius and under pressure, in a special device called an autoclave. Let me remind you that pasteurization is the process of treating raw materials with steam, or hot water at a temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius. Now let's get back to the yield of oyster mushrooms. The greatest influence on yield is exerted by the components that make up the substrate. Why is the yield of sterile and pasteurized substrate higher? With these methods of processing raw materials, we have the opportunity to mix different types of raw materials. Each plant material contains different nutrients that allow the oyster mushroom to make the most of its substrate. As a rule, everyone pays attention to the nitrogen content in raw materials. However, I have personally seen bags that produce more yield with less nitrogen. Some mushroom growers had a substrate that contained 0.6 nitrogen according to the Cheldahl method, while others had a nitrogen level of 0.78. However, the first mushroom growers had a yield from the first flush of 21%, while the second mushroom growers had only 17%. Research shows that in addition to nitrogen, oyster mushrooms need a certain amount of phosphorus and an overall balance of micronutrients. Since the substrate of the first mushroom growers was composed of three components, based on the recommendations of the laboratory that analyzed the raw materials, oyster mushrooms were able to absorb more nutrients from the substrate. When you process raw materials with hot water, you cannot use different components in one substrate. Since there is too high a chance that the substrate will deteriorate. After all, different types of raw materials require different processing times. You can, for example, use straw mixed with 5% alfalfa hay. But if we mix sunflower husks and alfalfa hay, then the likelihood that mold will begin to develop on the substrate increases significantly. But during pasteurization, we can mix straw from various plants, sunflower husks and 10 or even 15% alfalfa hay. In this case, the mycelium quickly occupies such a substrate. There are no yellow spots and no green or black mold. Unfortunately, many mushroom growers, especially those who do not grow a lot of mushrooms, are deprived of the opportunity to buy the raw materials that are more suitable. They are forced to work on the raw materials that are available near their place of residence. In any case, you need to be prepared for the fact that you will not be able to obtain high yields if your raw materials turn out to be poor in nutrients. It makes no sense to add mineral fertilizers to the substrate, since oyster mushrooms, unlike plants, cannot convert nutrients from minerals. Now let's look at the second question. When I talked about the nutritional value of the substrate, I mentioned the methods of processing raw materials. We have considered that mixtures of raw materials can be used during pasteurization and sterilization, but it is highly undesirable to make mixtures using the hydrothermal method. Since the substrate is damaged more often in this case, hot water treatment itself is an unstable substrate manufacturing method. Even if you work not with a mixture, but with one component, you may fail. It looks like you are doing the same thing as last time, but this time you have yellow spots or the substrate is too wet. 
If you pour hot water into raw materials and every time your substrate comes out of poor quality, then you are doing something wrong. Either you don't heat it up enough or you don't keep it in the water for enough time. Or vice versa, too much. And all these little things can affect the quality of the substrate and subsequently its productivity. Third question. I spoke in detail about the amount of mycelium in a separate video, look for the link in the comments to this video. In short, the amount of grain spawn added does not affect the yield. But, primordia appear several days earlier. If your raw materials have too few nutrients, your yield will be low. For example, you added 3% mycelium and got 10% oyster mushrooms by weight of the substrate. Then, of course, by increasing the dose of mycelium, you simultaneously increase the nutritional value of the substrate due to the grain. And when adding 7% spawn you will get, for example, 12% yield. However, you must understand that this is not a method for increasing yield. It is not justified economically, grain spawn costs more than an increase of 2% of the harvest. Even if you grow mycelium yourself. We just have to find out whether such parameters of the mushroom block as weight, size and perforation affect the yield. We can make perforations of different shapes and different quantities. I'll talk about this in the next video, I'll leave a link to it in the comments. I want to ask you, if you like my videos and they are useful for you, tell other mushroom growers in your country about my channel. Give a link to my videos in group of mushroom growers on WhatsApp or social networks. I will be very grateful to you. Have a nice day, everyone.